for consideration is number 24 on general orders. It is House File 14. Senator Kiffmeyer. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members. House File 14 has to do with the Help America Vote Act called HAVA. So this piece of legislation here is an exact, except for some additional money to meet the required 5% match for the federal funds. Other than that, this is the same language that you voted on last year. It is $1.534 million to the Secretary of State for what is determined to be the most important cybersecurity money that he needs right now. And so we took this from last year, sadly. Um, it was vetoed within that supplemental budget bill. But this is the same language, but it does include, which the original House file did not include, the rest of the 5% match. Uh, the Senate language that you have before you today does fulfill the 5% match requirement. 2.5 uh, from already expended funds and 2.5% approximately from the general fund. Other than that, this is the same language that you have voted on previously. As I said, it is the most important money that the Secretary of State needs for his cybersecurity program. This is the first, and there will be other money to come as well, but this is the first and the most important. And members, uh, we pass this on a Senate floor today, send it over to the House. They can accept it, and within a couple days, the Secretary of State can have this money and get started on that most important work. So members, I ask you to vote yes on House File 14. Thank you. Further discussion on House File 14. Senator Carlson. Thank you, Mr. President. I have the A2 amendment. The Secretary will report the Carlson A2 amendment. Senator Carlson moves to amend House File Number 14 as amended pursuant to Rule 45 adopted by the Senate. February 27th, 2019, as follows, page two. This is the A2 amendment. To the amendment, Senator Carlson. Thank you, Mr. President. And uh, to that, I actually have the A3 amendment to amend A the A2 amendment. The secretary will report the amendment to the amendment. Senator Carlson moves to amend the Carlson amendment to House File Number 14 as follows. Page one, line five, delete. This is the A3 amendment. To the A3 amendment, to the A2 amendment. Senator Carlson. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Mr. President, uh, this is an extremely important bill that uh, has been passed by uh, and, and signed by Congress on March 23rd of last year. President Donald Trump signed the Consolidated App Appropriations Act of 2018 into law. The act included $380 million for monies that would be distributed across the nation, $3 million to every state, and then an appropriate additional amount to the larger states and those with more complications. So the total is $380 million, and it goes about roughly $20 million down to $3 million for the, the least uh, appropriated states. Uh, this um, this uh, money is made available so that the election security improvements can be made on the election systems in each of the states in the union. We've, we know that there has been some attacks on the uh, secretaries of state's voter files in, in many states, and Minnesota is one of the 12 that's been identified as being uh, attacked, but fortunately they did not get into our system. But that doesn't mean that they haven't learned something since the 2016 election. So these funds were appropriated and released, and Minnesota got our release back in May of, uh, of 2018, I'm sorry, June of 2018, June 6th. We got $6,595,000. These funds have a match that has to be um, appropriated from the, uh, from the individual states. And again, uh, Minnesota does appropriate all funds, and so we are one of six states that had to go through this through our legislature to appropriate. The other 44 states were able to use these funds as soon as they were granted to them. So members, uh, this is really a rather, um, a rather procedural um, 
uh, job that we have to do, and we tried to do it as, uh, as the chair said in last year's uh, supplementary budget bill, but for many reasons that did not go through. And that was the money that was needed at that time. We have the Secretary of State arranging meetings throughout the interim with working groups, with several groups that had, have worked on it. They're expert groups. They were a bipartisan group with the exception that no, no, uh, of the, none of the majority senators took part in this. So the, uh, the majority in the House did pay, take part. And as, uh, as the, the chair of the committee said, this was uh, a bill that came over under House file number 14 and through our system has been converted to uh, have the language of Senate file 241. So we have to take a look at it. And, uh, and un unfortunately, there have been uh, informational hearings on the companion to House file 14, and that is uh, Senate file 93 that I participated in. We had a good faith introduction of that bill early in the session and that complied with uh, the popular perception that we were going to re uh, release these funds early. Uh, that bill st got stymied and it did not get through the committee process and so right now I'm amending the uh, uh, what is now 241 language in House File 14 to match what was the companion bill, Senate File 93. These are extremely important funds. Uh, it's a bipartisan effort. Uh, it, uh, it has been passed in uh, the other body under House File 14 with an over uh, an overwhelming majority in a majority of both parties. Uh, it, is a, uh, it is based on the comprehensive working group work that had been done throughout the interim and there were reports that were uh, sent out to people that had participated and had in, been invited to these meetings. The uh, counties have been informed on it and it, you can look at one of, the, uh, one of the handouts that has the list of projects that will be done under this. Uh, it is not related to any other software project, especially the two that we like to mention uh, that were not necessarily successful. This is one that is totally under the, uh, the administration of the Secretary of State. The Secretary of State is accountable for everything that gets done. And the feds, the Election Assistance Commission, the Federal Election Assistance Commission is going to be auditing and overseeing this. And when we do work for the feds, we have to, um, have to account for everything. In fact, down to the 15 minute interval, that work has to be accounted and reported back to the federal government. So there, this has a lot of audit attention and it will be something that is sorely needed. And if I think Mr. President and members, we know that the presidential uh, primary is only 53 weeks away. So we need things done as fast as possible. We need them tested. We need them distributed. We need them trained. And this is the money that it's going to take to do so. So members, I appreciate, I uh, would appreciate your support on this. And one, one more thing, I, I feel like I'm accountable for this because I am the ranking member in the uh, state government budget and elections committee. And so this is falling on the people in that committee, and it's falling on this body. And if you look at some of the handouts that I sent out, they're very critical of us. They're very critical of every one of us, me included, that we have not uh, uh, authorized these funds, and we are the only state in the nation that is now uh, essentially putting a target on our back and we don't know when these funds otherwise would be released and how many, how much of the funds would be released. So I would appreciate your support to get this done. These are federal funds. They do not affect our budget. Thank you, Mr. President. On the amendment to the amendment, Senator Kiffmeyer. Thank you, Mr. Chair and Senator Carlson. Uh, there's a lot that I agree with here. I'm just gonna say not yet. We are a unique state. And by the way, just to remind you that when the federal Help America Vote Act, the original authorization was for a large sum of money. 
They didn't appropriate it all right away. They phased it out. Matter of fact, many, many years later, we are now getting this portion, which is dedicated to cybersecurity. It was equipment. It was for the state voter registration system. So now we have a situation, by the way, in the state of Georgia, they rushed headlong into spending all their equipment money. You know what, a few years later, they threw it all away. They went into technology uh, that wasn't sound, wasn't good, and actually states to now are following Minnesota's lead. Minnesota is recognized as being very strong. As a matter of fact, by national ranking, we are the eighth most secure state for elections. And I think it's important to just remember that as we go through these things. So certainly, um, Senator Carlson, we will be getting to all of that money, but in the Minnesota way, we're going to make sure that this one-time money is appropriated in a way that will be consistent with the intention of the federal law, and also that, most importantly, that is consistent with Minnesota. Minnesota is thorough. They're careful. We do things that way. We don't want to have another Minshur thing or Min Lars where we rush headlong or another Georgia. We don't want to be doing that. It's okay to be careful. This is one-time money, and being careful is good. So, members, uh, those are my comments. Members, just a friendly reminder, if you're going to distribute uh, paper documents on the Senate floor, make sure you put your name on them before they are distributed. Uh, next on the list I have is Senator Isaacson. Mr. President, I oppose a call of the Senate. Senator Isaacson for uh, the remainder of the bill. The Senate is under call. Senator Isaacson. Mr. President, I move that further proceedings under the roll call be dispensed with and the Sergeant Arms be instructed to bring the absent members. On the motion, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. The motion prevails and the Sergeant Arms will bring in the absent members. Next, I have Senator Abler. Thank you, Mr. President. And um, I would like to divide the amendment if we can. And I don't know what the proper motion is, just to move that we do that or request that we do that. I'd like to divide it between lines 1.2 and 1.3. Senator Abler, uh, can you please uh, state uh, that uh, your uh, motion again, please? Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to divide the amendment, and, and uh, I don't care which one we vote on first, but 1 .2, between 1.2 and 1.3. One addresses money, the second addresses policy in a different section. I do believe it's divisible, and I think it'll make for a much better debate. The secretary will report the amendment, the division. A Senator Abler moves to amend, to divide the Carlson amendment to the amendment. Uh, first division would be lines 1.1 and 1.2. Second amendment would be 1.3 through 1.6. 6. Senator Carlson, uh, you can Thank you, Mr. Tell President. Us which and portion of the amendment you would like us to vote on first. I, I would like to give that option to the, uh, the senator who proposed the uh, division, but uh, either way, I would like to have a roll call vote. Senator Abler, uh, which portion are we voting on first? 
Well, thank you, Mr. I, I think the second portion, Mr. President, I think that none of us disagree about the second part. I think there's a discussion to be had about how much money we shall spend. So that, that's my request. We do the second part first. And then I'll speak to it if you'd like. Any further discussion? Senator Kiffmeyer. Thank you, Mr. President. I do support um, the, the, uh, my understanding. And uh, Mr. President, can you really please clarify exactly what we are voting for first? We will have the Secretary uh, let us know what portion we're voting on first. Portion to be voted on by the, of the, uh, of the Abler Amendment is the Carlson Amendment to the Carlson Amendment lines 1.3 to 1.6. And a roll call has been not, requested. The Carl, roll call is, is the, granted. The motion is, excuse me, Mr. President, it's the, the Carlson Amendment that we are voting on 1.3 to 1.6. Senator Kiffmeyer. Thank you, Mr. President. I accept that amendment and ask members to vote for it. Any further discussion? Senator Carlson. Thank you, Mr. President, and uh, thank you, Senator Abler, for uh, offering this uh, this choice here. This is this is good. This is the list that we have prepared. This is the list that the Secretary of State has committed to the Election Assistant Commis Commission to do, and uh, this is what will be covered in the uh, the entire uh, project when all of the money is released. We're hoping that that money is going to be released post haste. So I, I do appreciate the, uh, the amendment, uh, I'm sorry, the amendment to the amendment, and I support the, uh, this section of that amendment. So we are on the Abler motion, and just no, so we're clear, it's on the Carlson we're on the, okay, so we are on the divided Carlson amendment proposed by Senator Abler, and we are voting on section 1.3 through 1.6. A roll call has been requested. Seeing no further discussion, the secretary will take the roll. all of them. All senators having voted who have the desire to vote, the secretary will close the roll. There being 67 ayes and zero nays, the motion is adopted. The amendment is, the amendment is adopted. We are now on the first portion. The first portion of the Carlson. We are now on the first portion of the Carlson amendment to the amendment, which is line 1.1 to 1.2. And Senator Carlson, would you also like a roll call on this? Okay, roll call has been requested, a roll call, roll call granted. Any further discussion on the amendment? Senator Kiffmeyer. Uh, thank you, Mr. President and members. Uh, this is premature. Um, we will do our duty and vet thoroughly. This has not been done yet. And to appropriate all this money prior to that, uh, members, I ask you to vote no. Senator Kent. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Kiffmeyer is uh, opposing the access of the full federal funding that is available to protect Minnesota election systems and says, not yet, quote, she says, not yet. She says, quote, it is premature. I have asked in committee, and I ask again on this floor, why? 
First, we were told it was because there was some agreement around the $1.5 million, but then we got a letter, and that agreement was between leaders of the, of the Senate and the House. Then we get a letter from the Speaker of the House, and members have a copy of that on their desks from Senator Carlson, indicating that the House was proceeding with the full funding because it is timely. We have elections that we need to secure. And so that excuse seems to have vanished because there wasn't an agreement, apparently. Um, uh, there have been discussed concerns that we don't have a plan to spend these funds adequately. Well, there were exhaustive working groups um, held to carefully look at a range of options. This, uh, this sheet, the list of the appropriation proposals that Senator Carlson has referred to and has distributed to members um, that adds up to $6.963 million is on your desks. And that is, there is great detail that goes behind this one sheet of paper. And we've heard it in committee in an informational uh, setting. But that work has been done. And it is, even when, you know, for those of us who are not super f savvy about tech, we understand upgrading our antivirus protection. And those are the kinds of measures that are being proposed to protect Minnesotans and to protect our sacred right to vote. So I, don't, I still don't understand why it's premature. I still don't understand why not yet. The House obviously thought it's not premature because they, on a pretty strong bipartisan basis, and you have that information on your desk as well, have passed the full funding because they seem to understand that it is important that we begin the work now at an adequate level to protect our elections coming up in 2020. We're about a year out from our first primary. And as Senator Carlson has said and as others have said, we know that attacks are ongoing. We have already had people bad actors try to breach our election system. We know that's going to continue. And guess what? Now that we are the only state in the union that has opted not to access this funding and further harden our election systems, I think that puts an even bigger target on our back. And so if I'm a bad actor and I want to figure out where might I make the most mischief, I'm going to go to the state that hasn't even a, a supported these funds yet. Others have pointed out that this, is, this should not be a partisan issue. This should be something we can all get behind. And I'm going to read from uh, the Star Tribune editorial that Senator Carlson uh, put on everyone's desks. Lawmakers could have easily consented early in the session. Had that been the case, the Secretary of State's office would already be working on updates. Instead, like most everything else in this session, the authorization has a and I apologize, that's the, the, the previous year, because that's true. In 2018, we had the opportunity to do this as a standalone bill, but that was also resisted. What I will refer to um, is a recent editorial in the Mankato Free Press. And what they had to say is, it is hard to imagine any kind of legislative action being any less controversial. I could not agree more. This could not be any less controversial to go ahead and make access of these federal funds that were approved by Republican Congress, Republican President, and sent out to harden our, secure, our election systems. And this Mankato Free Press editorial goes on to say, the Senate GOP's actions are at best an excused delay and at worst intentional obfuscation. Members, we have an obligation to the people of the state of Minnesota to authorize these funds now. We should accept Senator Carlson's amendment at the full amount that is available so that we can do the important, crucial work of protecting our democracy and protecting our right to vote. Further discussion on line 1.2 of the amendment to the amendment, Senator Gazelka. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Members, I, I thought it'd be worth having some clarity about what was said and not said between the, uh, Representative Hortman and myself. Uh, and just so you all know, <laughs> excuse me, so you all know we have a good working relationship. We communicate regularly. And early on, we said, what are the things that we think we can move and get done? And we agreed that whatever we could find agreement on in the last year's uh, omnibus bill that was vetoed, let's take those pieces out, bring it to the two chairs, and move those forward. And so uh, that, that is saying that we wanted to move some of these things forward. It is not saying that uh, Representative Hortman promised that we would do that and she's breaking her word, it, nor am I. It was the process that we're trying to do to move as many things forward as we can. And so I instructed uh, Senator Kiffmeyer to said, that if this is something you can move from last year's bill that the governor vetoed, 
let's figure out how to move it forward and get that done right away. Well, we're in February. That's sort of right away in the Senate. Uh, and so, but the rest of that, keep in mind that Senator Kiffmeyer is former Secretary of State. She knows a lot about these issues. And the fact that she wants to take a little more time, which is what we always do in here on a lot of issues, is absolutely something that we should be open to. And so that's part of the reason I'm, I'm rising to say I'm opposed to the additional money. And just to let you all know that we, we want to move the things that we could get done right away. That first number, the number that she's moving forward, it secures upgrading of SVRS and the other, uh, the other technology part of it. It, it secures that. So as far as the security part goes, this takes care of that. There's a few more months left for the rest of it. That, to me, is uh, not too long is, is when you evaluate what we, we do on so many different bills here. So I just want to give you guys some background. Members, I do have a list that I'm working off of. Uh, next on my list, Senator Howe. Thank you, Mr. President. And members, I agree. We shouldn't wait on this because we need to secure those funds within two years. This bill, without the amendment, secures those funds. That's what we need to do. And we heard in committee that the 1.5 was what we needed to do to get the SVRS system upgraded and get the security, get the security measures online. Their own, the Secretary of State's own IT expert made that point. He agreed that this is the important money, these are the funds that we need to secure. So members, don't delay this. Let's get this done. We can have a discussion on the rest of the money, but this secures all the money so we can have that discussion. We shouldn't wait until we get to the end of session when everything gets bottled up and we start worrying about the money, this money secures the entire funds. That's what we need to get done. Members, let's, let's make this happen. Further discussion on line 1.2 of the amendment to the amendment, Senator Lane. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Uh, let me talk a bit about what we hear not yet to. First, uh, one of the recommendations of the work group is to modernize the statewide voter registration system, and that's the only one that I understand this funding of 1.5 out of the 6.6 .6 million will actually be able to fund. Now, this needs to, this needs to be brought up to date. I, I just want to say that this system was launched in 2004 because we got 5.1 million from where? From HAVA funds from the federal government. Yes, uh, Help America Vote Act HAVA funds came in before and have been given to the Secretary of State to do the job. Plus, we back then added 1.2 million in state funds to build the system. That, uh, it needs to be brought up to date now. It doesn't need to be rewritten, it needs to be updated. It will be done one module at a time over four years. Some have asked us, would it be another Minlar's problem? No, it isn't revamping the entire system from scratch. It's a reworking one module at a time, testing it, putting it back into the service, and then doing another, another module. But it requires three programmers to do this over four years. Some have asked, is Minute involved? No, the executive branch is organized under the uh, technology of Minute, but the constitutional officers are independent. They organize their own IT. They are not under Minute. The Secretary of State, as we know, back in 2004 that received the HAVA funds was Senator Kiffmeyer. The legislature released these federal HAVA funds to her so she could create this system. Now, this job is all she will allow the Secretary of State currently to do. She will only release the 1.5 million of these federal HAVA funds to the current Secretary of State to update this very system. However, these HAVA funds, as we have just heard, are for cybersecurity. Yes, revamping the SVRS system is part of having a secure system, but there is so much more. Every other state and Puerto Rico and Virgin Islands, et cetera, have all had this money for a year now. There's only five states that require permission from the legislature. The others get it automatically. The ones that have required permission from the legislature have gotten that permission, except us. Here is some of the needs that need to be handled besides the updating of the statewide voter registration system. 
Um, we, these are the ones that are said, not yet. We need to bring in an outside expert to analyze our post-election analysis to be able to detect tabulation errors, errors better. This is something every state is keyed into, and this will be a longer process of making sure we have it right. We need to audit the security of information that we share with the Department of Public Safety and the Social Security Administration. We want our list to be as accurate as possible, but we have to check security concerns in our protocols for sharing of data. We need to install a database activity monitoring software to monitor and block any malicious activity. This is like having burglar alarms and cameras on our system. We need to do network segmentation to limit access to separate areas of the system. One of the things this does is prevent ransomware from getting into the entire system. We need to install technolog technology to have real-time analysis of possible suspicious activity. And we need to get the kind of software, the antivirus software, that goes beyond looking for known malware to analyzing what a particular coding is doing and then blocking it based on its malicious behavior, even if it isn't known malware. We need to have privilege access management system to process and monitor who is in our system, when and where and how and why. We need hardware. We need infrastructure upgrades to accommodate additional capacity, to have more storage and backup, and the ability to continually protect our storage. The counties and cities need help in cybersecurity knowledge and support. We can provide sub-grants to local jurisdictions to increase their security software and physical storage capacities. We need to have this information sharing with the counties and cities to be secure. We need to scan our websites and our online tools for vulnerabilities, and we need to, this is a recommendation, one of many from Homeland Security, we need to develop written cybersecurity policies and procedures. And uh, a re a Homeland Security is recommending that we hire a policy writer to do this. These funds must be used up in five years, and one year is gone. The other body has passed the full funding by a bipartisan vote of 105 to 23. The need for cybersecurity is great. Bots are attacking our system constantly. They only need to get the hit right once, we need to block everyone. Any messing with our system has the potential to not only steal private data, but we, but, we, but we have also the larger goal of preventing the disrupting of our trust in our elections. If people lose faith in the integrity of our elections, we severely impact our very democracy. We hear concerns that people aren't voting who, should, who shouldn't be, are voting who shouldn't be. Again and again, the claims of thousands wrongly voting are verified false. But this funding and this job is for cybersecurity from threats to our voting technology. Let's keep our eye on that ball. Um, most states, there's only those five states that have to go through a process of what I call Simon Says. May we take this money, please, from the federal government who has already sent it to us. But we're one of the states who are still begging, please. Simon Says, please, please, Simon, may we take this money. Let's get it done. Let's get the whole thing going. We have a limited period of time to handle it, and it is clearly cybersecurity needs that we can all agree with. Thank you. Further discussion on line 1.2 of the amendment to the amendment, Senator Cohen. Thank you, Mr. President. Let me just offer a brief follow-up to Senator Lane. Um, and I think we should also pay attention to one of the newest members of the Senate, Senator Howe, who indicated we should not let this get caught up in an end of the session uh, chess game that we like to play, that we ought to do it now, was what I heard from Senator Howe. Um, a couple things. First of all, in the Finance Committee, we had the opportunity to listen to Secretary of State Simon. And having been here for a while, I was very struck by his testimony. Uh, he referenced classified hearings uh, from the Department of Homeland Security relative to the need to do this right now. He suggested that absent this appropriation right now, uh, there are significant problems that will occur in the very near future. And I'm very struck by the fact, as Senator Lane pointed out, that the outlier in the United States, 49 other states under both Democratic and Republican uh, majority control, have access to this, this money. That makes the outlier in the entire country the Minnesota State Senate Republican Caucus. 
and I'm not quite sure why that is. We didn't hear any discussion in the Finance Committee, nor have I heard on the floor as to why that is. But I will suggest, you know, I, members know I like history. It's instructive. So let me offer a brief history lesson from a number of years ago. The original Federal HAVA, HAVA Act was passed in a direct response to the 2000 presidential election, the one that was decided in the state of Florida by 537 votes. And it was determined that there was the need for federal support to make sure we had secure election systems. We went through the same thing in 2003 to make sure we accessed the federal money. And the reason that's an instructive history lesson is things were a little bit flipped at that point. We had a Republican governor, Governor Pawlenty. We had a Republican majority in the state house and a DFL majority in the state Senate. I was chair of the Senate Finance Committee. Uh, my counterpart was then Representative Knobloch. And we had a request from the Secretary of State, Senator Kiffmeyer, who was then Secretary of State. And she made it clear in the Senate Finance Committee the need to access the money immediately, the 2003 federal appropriation, that we needed to access the money immediately to make sure we were properly prepared for the 2004 election. And neither the House majority at that time nor the Senate majority, again the Democrats, made a big deal of having to delay this for some unknown reason. We listened to Secretary Kiffmeyer. We listened to her implore us to do it now, to protect an election a year from that date. Now it's very interesting that things have flipped and now we find previous Secretary Kiffmeyer, now Senator Kiffmeyer, providing unnamed reasons and excuses, which we haven't heard, we didn't hear it in the Finance Committee, I haven't heard it on the floor today, as to why we need to delay this. And again, I'll reference Senator Howe suggesting we should not allow this to be caught up in the chess game of the end of the session. Further discussion, Senator Isaacson. Uh, I've been thinking about, when I'm listening to this argument, I'm trying to imagine a, a citizen at home who's got a day off and for reasons that I'm sure beyond all understanding is watching us right now and watching these arguments take place. And I imagine that when that citizen who maybe isn't as informed or just kind of keeping up with the daily news but doesn't have a deep understanding just yet, watches this and hears the majority leader or the chair talk about why we need time to think about and vet this, on its face, that may seem somewhat reasonable to them. You know, in my classes, I teach a speech class, and in my speech class, I talk about what's something called surface and depth listening. And surface listening is when you take something that's said and have it on its face value without a lot of deeper thought or looking for a deeper context or meaning into it, and you just kind of accept it at face value. And, and if that argument was true, if that was the case, I'm not sure that when I hear them, they seem unreasonable. The problem is, is that the comments they've made, the majority leader and the chair, are completely devoid of any respect for the context they're making them in. Like, the reality of all the things we've just talked about, about being the only state in the union that's, that's, that's not put this into place, about the urgency of now when it comes to taking care of, of our election needs. And when asked to articulate a really decent argument to explain what exactly they're vetting for, we don't hear one. So I'm hoping that the citizen that's still sitting there maybe having their breakfast or whatever lunch, whatever they're doing, thinks a little deeper about that and sees this is really a specious argument. It is the height of what I talk about when I say intellectual dishonesty. But on its merits, just face forward, it seems like it's okay. But when it's applied to the real world in the context of now, it doesn't hold up at all. It is actually quite silly to be making the arguments that I'm hearing when you think about what we're trying to accomplish and what has happened across the country with this money, by the way, passed by a Republican Congress and a Republican president. Now, I've heard Republican operatives on talk shows posit the reason why this is being held over is it's a bargaining chip. I'm not ready to ascribe such horrible motives to my opponents, but what I will say is if somehow that ends up being the case, they're going to know about it. The citizens are going to know about it because this is not a bargaining chip. Our elections need to be safe for all of us. And the fact that we're doing anything that would require or result in delay in the full money going in and allowing our Secretary of State, who has a wonderful record as the past eight years, I think is a travesty to our democracy. And so when you do a little depth listening and you listen beyond just the merits of exactly what's said and look at it in the context and its proper meaning, this argument doesn't hold up at all. 
And the reality of the context urges us, as the citizens, as the state, as the government, and what the, what the federal government's doing and nationally, to take control of this, take the lead on this, and get after it. And we're simply blocking it for reasons that remain a mystery to me. So I would encourage us to vote for this amendment. I hope that we do that. Thank you. Further discussion on line 1.2 of the amendment to the amendment, Senator Carlson. Thank you, Mr. President. I guess I'm kind of, kind of confused here. Um, you know, I took part in those meetings over the interim. We had cybersecurity experts. We had the Secretary of State. We had people that were staffers. We had uh, from the House. But we had no, no senator there, no senator on the phone. And we worked very hard on preparing this list. And you have the project list in front of you. There's 24 items on there. This is ready. It's not that we're not ready. It is ready. The money is here. The money has been accessible by the state of Minnesota since that day that it was sent over. And in fact, uh, part of the, of the law allows us to spend state, uh, Secretary of State funds and use them as part of the match. And so the Secretary of State has been already spending some of the funds from his department, and that's uh, being included in, as part of the match. Now, we had the uh, comprehensive working group, again, that met over the interim. They uh, put out minutes. Uh, they put out a report, and I believe the report came out in, uh, in December. And uh, there were five subcommittees, and they each put out a report. And there was no negative feedback, none given. We had informational hearings. Uh, and I have to say, again, on uh, Senate File 93, I got that from the chair of the committee. And this was at the time when all of the op-eds, all of the articles that were printed in the paper did not have a smaller amount. What they said is, let's release these funds. And you know, the, uh, it's possible that the newspapers were wrong. They didn't realize that this was the same amount of funds that was in the bill that was uh, seven months old and got vetoed. But we're at the point now where we have to do something. And again, we're ready. All the other states, all of the other states in the nation have already started spending this money to make their voting system secure. And that's the title of these funds, is the Help America Vote Act Voter Security Release. $380 million to increase our security. Security, security, security. And this is what is really important for the voters of Minnesota to know that, that they can rely on their voting system, that their voting system is being taken care of by us in the Senate. We, uh, we, you know, uh, Senator Cohen did mention that uh, the Secretary of State was granted a security, um, a secret security level, and given uh, briefings, and he was very serious about it. He was very tight-jawed, saying that these these attacks are real, the need is real. We have to get started on it, and at this point, I have to ask, if not now, when? If we don't know why, why? Why not? The action list is done. The meetings are done. The application has been made. We're only sitting on funds that we don't know when they're going to be released. We don't know why they're being held, and I would hope that uh, we can get a green vote on uh, keeping this, this amendment in the bill. Thank you. Further discussion, Senator Root. <coughs> Members, I know that we're really passionate about this issue, but I'm just going to remind you about Mason's section 124, one and two. In debate, a member must combine remarks to the question before the House and avoid personalities. And two, a member in referring to another member should avoid using the member's name, rather identifying that member by district, by seat, as the member who last spoke, or describing the member in some other manner. 
This is going to be a long debate today, and I'd really appreciate that we keep this not personal, but to the debate at hand. Thank you. Senator Rood, thank you for the reminder. Uh, next on the list, I have Senator Coran. Senator Coran passes. Next, Senator Nelson. Thank you, Mr. President. Well, it is clear that every one of us in this chamber strongly supports election security, strongly supports funding for upgrading election-related computer systems and reducing technological vulnerabilities, especially those identified by the Department of Homeland Security. And of course, we def want to defend against foreign foreign interference in our upcoming 2020 presidential election. Uh, that was clear. Everyone in this chamber, I think every Minnesotan, supports that. And we're talking about the timeliness of authorizing expenditures from the HAVA account. Now, we have to remember that 1.5 million was authorized in the last legislative session. And yet, those funds were vetoed by our governor at that point. And we have been working through in these first few weeks of session, trying to repass those items that this body passed last year and that Governor Dayton vetoed. So I want to make it very clear to all Minnesotans that this body has, I'm a, I believe, uh, looking at our last amendment, are going to pass the $1.5 million that was vetoed last year. And of course, we are very glad, and we must know, as we do, that those $1.5 million includes the 5% match to secure the rest of the HAVA funds. So my question to Senator Kiffmeyer was, what's the status of these additional funds? And my understanding is that our goal is to release the funds as soon as possible. Those funds that were vetoed by the governor that this body has uh, passed. But when it came to the remainder of the funds, which are secured by the 5% match, but on those release, there were more questions that needed uh, answers. And so I believe we should honor what was said earlier. We want to get these bills that were vetoed in the last legislative session, we need to get those out the door right away. I suggest that we fully support the $1.5 million today, get it out the door, and then I want to hear the state government committee in talking about the rest of the funding. Now, the one thing that hasn't been mentioned today is a very embarrassing thing for Minnesota, and that is our horrible history in statewide IT programs. We had an OLA report that just came out that talked about lack of oversight and what that meant to Minnesotans with the uh, Minute and the Minlars mayhem. We still have Minnesotans that have to wait 80 days to get their licenses. Of course, our previous big, um, elect or our big IT rollout was Minsure. Again, a lot of problems. So members, we just don't have the best track history in rolling out these large, large um, technological programs. And when it comes to voting and elections, members, we have to get it right. I suggest that we review the OLA reports on our previous failures at these big, with these big technological rollouts and make sure we get it right when it comes to elections. That's why I support the immediate 1.5 million and the 5% that captures all the rest of those funds, but we must do our due diligence as legislative oversight and make sure that the remainder of those funds, the vast majority of those funds, 
are spent in a way that will achieve the intended results, which is protecting the integrity of our election system. Therefore, it would be foolhardy for us to rush in and fully fund at this point without knowing that the intended result of election integrity would be accomplished. Further discussion on line 1.2 of the amendment to the amendment, Senator Kent. Thank you, Mr. President. I want to be very clear for members that a couple of things happened in the 2018 session with regards to that $1.5 million. First of all, that was the initial amount requested at that time because at that time, that was what the Secretary of State's office felt like they could effectively implement successfully to help secure the 2018 elections, by the way. And we missed that opportunity. I will acknowledge, yes, that was the language was in the bill that was vetoed, but it's also worth pointing out that that language passed in the House. And we had the opportunity in the Senate to carry that as a standalone bill, but that was blocked. So we need to be clear and understand that that $1.5 million that was relevant in 2018 Work has gone on, and I know there's a lot of good, important conversation about due diligence, and the work has to be done to make sure we're effectively planning, to effectively use these funds, to effectively secure our election systems. Well, that has happened, and we have had two hearings now in the State Government Committee, um, one on, uh, I keep getting the bill numbers mixed up, the uh, uh, SF-241, which we are, had that language before us, but we've also had an informational hearing on SF-93, which was the, the larger amount. Um, and there has been extensive debate and discussion and questioning about all sorts of information, details, that go behind this one page that lists in some amount of detail how these funds would be used to secure our election. So the hearings have been had. I think it's unfortunate that uh, uh, SF93 was only given an informational hearing. We had a very good discussion about it. Um, but we need to act now. We have the plans in place. Working groups have worked hard over the interim to do this research, to do this planning. These are recommendations that reflect um, these are proposals that reflect recommendations from the Department of Homeland Security, from cybersecurity consultants, and from other important partners in this process. I, I would like to ask if Senator Gazelka would yield. Senator Gazelka will yield. Senator Kent. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Gazelka, I appreciate your comments on the on the timing that we're going to do this initial passage now and then we'll do the rest of it. I keep asking the question why. I still am confused about why we can't do this because I believe we've adequately answered it in committee on this floor with a, plent with a lot of research. But my question for you at this point, Senator Gazelka, when? It's February 28th, tomorrow's March. When will it be time for us to p get these funds passed, the full amount passed, as the House has done on a bipartisan basis, so that the professionals who are involved in protecting our elections throughout our state will have the resources that they need to do so. Senator Gazelka. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Senator Kent, uh, as soon as possible, I, I think we will get it, uh, I, I know that we will get it done this session. I respect the committee process and to respect the, uh, the leadership of our chairs. Uh, how they navigate the issues that they want to look at, uh, and that uh, would be my commitment uh, today. And, and I would also want to say, doing the first part is very important and urgent. I think that's the part that we all need to, to work to make sure we get done today. Um, the dire response of not doing the rest of it, uh, I don't think, is, is really where we're at. Senator Kim. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you, Senator Gazelka. I would submit that $1.5 million was urgent a year ago to secure our 2018 elections. And the work that needs to be done to secure our system for the 2020 primary that is a year from now and the 2020 elections in November of 2020, that work needs to begin immediately. We are hearing it from a lot of experts. That money was passed well over a year ago by Congress and signed by President Trump. And it remains a mystery to me and many, many Minnesotans why we would delay 
doing this important work. Further discussion on line 1.2 of the amendment to the amendment, Senator Swazinski. Thank you, Mr. President. We're going to hear a lot this session about um, us being the only divided state legislature in this country. It's going to come up time and time again by both sides of the aisle. All Republican legislation, all Republican legislate, all Republican controlled state legislatures in this country have passed this legislation. All Democratic legislatures in this country have seen fit to pass this legislation and accept this money, this gift, if you will, from the federal government. Minnesota stands alone. It doesn't make any intellectual sense. We should accept this money and move on and start talking about all the other issues the people of, the, of the Minnesota are expecting us to be talking about. The people of Minnesota, in fact, the people of America, are watching this experiment in divided legislature in the coming biennium. And we can't show the world that we are letting them down. Thank you, Mr. President. Further discussion, Senator Isaacson. Well, once again, I'd like to talk to the average citizen out there that's still paying attention. I appreciate you doing that. I want to introduce you to the concepts of a straw man argument and a red herring argument, which is what we heard a few minutes ago. And what that is, it's a reasoning fallacy that seeks to misdirect you in understanding what the purpose of what you're doing is. And what I heard from a senator from southern Minnesota, if I followed quorum correctly there, uh, was exactly that when they referred to some of the IT issues we have uh, and then also conflated that, and that's the word I'd use is conflate that over to what's happening within the voter system that the Secretary of State uses. Uh, again, we see what's called a reasoning fallacy, and that is where we try to conflate that things to make gains in an argument that actually aren't related at all. So I hope that the, the, the citizen at home understands as I try to de decode this or unpack what we're hearing, that the reality is, is that the argument is simply this. We don't want to, and we have the votes. That's why they're not passing it, because no other argument has came forth that actually makes sense or stands up to the test of time or the test of reason, test of logic, or the test of the facts of the situation. Uh, and, and if anybody, with all due respect, took offense to my previous comments, I made great pains not to be attacking, but really to just draw what we're looking at. And I don't know what else to do. We're running out of possible reasons why we're not working on this. If you say that we want to do it as soon as possible, as soon as possible is in about 15 seconds when we could vote on it and pass it. That's as soon as possible. Anything else is a delay. So folks and the people listening at home, I hope you're seeing, we're trying to parcel through some of the language here, and the reality is, is there just isn't a will to do it. There isn't a reason, there just isn't a will. And they have the vote so they can stop it. So that's unfortunate because that's not how I think any of us would want this to happen. Thank you. Further discussion on line 1.2 of the amendment to the amendment, Senator Carlson. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, and thank you, Senator Isaacson, for uh, defining what is as soon as possible, because I, I feel the same way. As soon as possible is right now. If, it, if we're not going to do it right now, then we have to decide what are we going to do. And we have the, the project list here. And I'm wondering, Mr. President, would uh, Senator Kiffmeyer yield for a question? Senator Kiffmeyer will yield. Senator Carlson. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. And thank you, Senator Kiffmeyer. I, I see the list here has 24 items on it. Uh, the secure and modernize the statewide voter registration system uh, is estimated. Now, these are estimates at $1.490 million. Uh, then there's other things like the uh, implementation of multi-factor uh, authentication, ongoing support for multi-factor authentication. Those are the, the systems that prevent people from getting into our systems. There's 87 counties and each of them have people that get into our system. Once one bad actor gets into the one county, there's other, other things that are open. The whole system is open. And there's other um, sub-items on this project list that are equally important. And uh, Senator Kiffmeyer, I'd like to know which ones of these do you not want to do if we're only going to uh, release $1.5 million? And what is the timing of the, the secondary release or the tertiary release? 
And uh, we, we do have to know that this is coming up on us. And uh, as much as I don't want to mention those other two software problems that people have mentioned, one of the problems with them was not going to the customers and getting customer input and also not rolling it out in a test mode and doing beta tests with that software. So we need to do that same thing on this list of projects because it is primarily software. And I guess I'd like to know which, which ones are going to be prioritized and which ones are we going to skip at this point because the Secretary of State is waiting for this money that's been already released by the federal government. Senator Kiffmeyer. Thank you, Mr. President and members. Uh, in regards to this, it is a long list. But the first two things on the list were described as the most important for the cybersecurity. And as was mentioned before, this has been well vetted. Uh, we've all previously voted on this. We know what it is. We know its importance. And this is something that we can quickly get done. So that is what we're doing right now, Senator Carlson. You and I agree on that. We appreciate that. In regards to some of the others, there's another 22 items or so on the list. And as we had the informational hearing, actually many of those, um, as was testified, such as, and I again, uh, segmentation is one of them, they're already doing. Several of the others, they're already doing. And, but other ones, I still have more questions about it, and I'm uncertain. I think this is not for us to do on the Senate floor. This is committee work. This is the work that is done best within the committee structure. That is the way they are set up. That is the way we enable ourselves to do that very thorough process. But I didn't want to hold anything up. I wanted to get this money, $1.534 million, and in addition to secure the match, which the House does not do. Matter of fact, they voted against it twice, which is beyond me why you would do that. What we do here in our Senate bill is fulfill the 5% match in its entirety, secure that money, make sure that it stays right here in Minnesota. We do the most important things. We get that done quickly. And on that, Senator Carlson, you and I agree. Thank you. Senator Carlson. Yeah. Thank you, Senator Kipmeyer. And I guess uh, I'm, I'm not sure if I understand the, uh, the notion of securing the money because it is already secured until 2023. And if, uh, if we're talking, if this is important to us to secure the money, I think what we need to do is we need to get it into the system. We need to get it uh, you know, right now. And I, I hate to use the term spent, but that's what we need to do. We need to get people working on it and we need to buy the the uh, contracts, we need to buy the labor, we need to buy this right now. We have a major election coming up that's, by the time 20, 2023 comes around, that's going to be major history. So to secure the money is really something that uh, scares me because it sounds like we're going to delay um, turning this money over. And I, again, don't know what projects we're going to fund and which ones we're going to uh, let die. And I agree uh, with you, uh, Senator Kipmeyer, that uh, this is not really the place to do this kind of discussion. It would have been better to do it with the working group. The working group sat around a table and talked about each and every one of these items and wrote a report on it. And when that report came out, there was no response from anyone. So I think that those kinds of questions but we had ample opportunity to, uh, to offer response, to offer disagreement, and to discuss what is going to be done and what is not going to be done. And then we did have the informational hearings where we really didn't talk about what needed to be done. We talked more about whether it should be done at all. And so I'm, I'm a little concerned about this need for securing the funds because the funds are already secured by the federal government, and all we need to do is pull them into the Secretary of State's office. So thank you very, very much for your answer, Senator Kiffmeyer. Further discussion, Senator Kiffmeyer. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I need to clarify this. Unless we pass this bill that has the additional $163,000 of general fund money 
half of the federal money would revert back to the federal government. We have got to put in an additional $163,000 from the general fund, and that enables us, so while that, those dollars are in this holding account, um, without that 5% match, we are not authorized to uh, use all of that money. So uh, when I talk about securing, it is fulfilling the 5% match, which um, is needed in this bill with $163,000 from the general fund. We are on line 1.2 of the amendment to the amendment. Any further discussion? Senator Isaacson. Well, folks, I'm, I'm back again because I feel the need to explain to some folks that are at home when they're listening. Just now we heard what's called a false dichotomy, and that is a different reasoning fallacy where you're giving me two options and removing one. Uh, the reality is, is, from what I understood from the good senator uh, to my right behind me, uh, that unless we pass this, we're not going to secure the money, except that we have two more years to do that. So that argument, creating the sense of urgency on that part right now, doesn't actually make sense when what we're really talking about here and what this amendment is actually talking about is putting the full amount of money in, which I still have yet to hear any reason at all from anyone explaining why we wouldn't do this. And I, and I would hope that the person at home by now has probably finished their sandwich is, is good and angry and wondering what kind of tomfoolery is going on up here? Because I feel like there's just a lot of tomfoolery happening, Mr. President, and I'm really disappointed by that. Thank you. Further discussion, Senator Kent? Seeing no further discussion, uh, the Secretary will take the roll on line 1.2 of the amendment to the amendment. All senators having voted who have the desire to vote, the secretary will close the roll. There being 32 ayes and 35 nays, the motion does not prevail, the motion does not prevail and the amendment is not adopted. Members, we are back on the A2 Carlson Amendment. Senator Carlson. Yep. Mr. President, I withdraw the A2 Amendment. Senator Carlson withdraws the A2 Amendment. Members, we are back on House File 14 as amended.
my apologies, members. We are on House File 14. Uh, it has not been amended because the amendment was withdrawn. Further discussion on House File 14? Seeing no further discussion on House File 14, the Secretary will give House File 14 its third reading. House File Number 14, a bill for an act relating to state government requiring the use of reports. Any further discussion? See uh, Senator Curran. Thank you, Mr. President. And again, I think the urgency for our, our uh, to secure our funding for our voting, Help America Vote Act funds is important, but it was a priority of ours in the Republican Senate. And when you look at last year, we passed this bill off, and the primary reason for this additional, for the, for the one-year delay was the veto by the governor. Not only did he not deem it important to, to take care of the cybersecurity for our elections, he also decided at that time it was also not important to secure all of our statewide systems from a cybersecurity perspective and turn down the full offer for cybersecurity funding um, in which the Republican Senate offered him. So I would, I would agree that we need to secure our funding. I, I support Senator Kiffmeyer. Thank you. Senator Kiffmeyer. Thank you, Mr. President and members. Uh, we're very pleased today to be able to agree that cybersecurity and protecting our elections is very important. And this bill does exactly that. It takes care of that. And it puts first things first in regards to the most urgent and the most important. I appreciate all of your support, and I look forward to the ongoing efforts on the balance of the money as we come forward and we give them the Minnesota scrutiny that we always have done and be thorough and careful. This is one-time money, it is federal money. And just to mention that we must have the 5% match. We have four years to spend it once we have met the 5% match. We are in the second year of the requirement to meet the 5% match. This bill takes care of, of accomplishing that in this second year and then we will be able to um, con continue to appropriating uh, the balance of the money and making sure that every dollar is used wisely, that is used for the intentions that the federal government has sent us to for cybersecurity. And members, I ask for your yes vote on House File 14. Thank you. Senator Kent. Thank you, Mr. President. I just think this is a really sad day. Because to me, there is absolutely not much more in our world, in our country, in our state that is more sacred than our right to vote and the election systems that we and thousands of election volunteers around our state put a lot of effort into securing and uh, preserving that sacred right to cast our ballot. And today, we have an opportunity to rise to the occasion, to battle back against what we know through history and through warnings that we have been given are bad actors from foreign countries who think it's okay to meddle with our elections. And the arguments that we're hearing for not going forward with the full funding, uh, I think are playing games with our election systems. We have had the opportunity to give this even more than the two hearings that we've already given it. We could have taken more time in the past two months to look at this issue. This has been on the table since before session started, um, if that's the argument. But the argument keeps changing. I agree with Senator Isaacson. The people who have just finished their sandwiches have a real legitimate reason to be asking what is going on and why Minnesota is alone in the United States in not accessing these federal funds that have been available for over a year that could have been used a year ago to take care of our, help support our 2018 elections. And now we are going to kick this can down the road. I think I heard Senator Gazelka say, hopefully we'll get the rest of the money this session. If not, we're going to not be back here until next, next spring when we've got a primary in March of 2020. And we know 
for those who like to be critical of the way IT is handled in this state, it would probably be better to get a head start on these, work, on these projects, to be working on them, to be bringing in the partners, to be bringing in the vendors, to be doing the testing that we all know from lots of hearings needs to be done to ensure that our systems are working. Time is our friend in that instance. Delay is not. So I am deeply disappointed that we are not going to pass the full funding, and I cannot support it in this way. I hope that when this bill goes back to the House, that it'll come into conference and we can come back with the full funding and I can vote on it in the future. Any further discussion on House File 14? Senator Pratt. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, you know, I've been listening to the debate, and uh, I, maybe I have a little bit different take on, on what this means. We've talked about not securing the full funding. What Senator Kiffmeyer's bill does is secure the full funding for this project. The House bill does not. We fully allocate out of the general fund the matching funds to secure the full federal funding. What we are not approving is full spending. And to me, that's, that's the big difference. We are fully funding this project. We are not fully spending this, pro this project. And I think Senator Kiffmeyer, as a former Secretary of State, has insight and expertise in this. And, and I, I believe we need to have very, very good oversight on this. Because I've looked at the list of projects, and they don't all seem extremely urgent. Now, I'm not the best to say what's, what's urgent on this or not, but when I see words like potential or policy writing, to me that doesn't seem like they're urgent. And so I trust Senator Kiffmeyer, and I'm proud to vote for this bill that's a, that, that puts the most important funding up front so that we secure our, our voter registration system and then put the appropriate oversight that we as a legislature have and must exercise to make sure that the rest of the money is fully um, and effectively uh, uh, spent. Thank you. Any further discussion on House File 14? Seeing none, the Secretary will take the roll. All senators having voted who have the desire to vote, the secretary will close the roll. There being 35 ayes and 32 nays, the bill is passed and it's titled agreed to.